Hey, beautiful friends. We are back for another episode of the Robin Graham show. And I am so grateful you're here with me today. You know, I talk so much about personal branding. I talk about telling stories. We've had so many guests on who talk about similar things. It might feel a little repetitive at times, but here is the thing. It takes us seven to 21 times to hear a message and have it truly resonate to the point where we take action. So I'm going to bring in a, an expert on brand story again today because I feel like her method is going to make a lot of sense to you that it's going to help you be able to continue to grow your personal brand, which ultimately I think is the key to having a solid foundation and giving yourself the opportunity for long-term success. When you truly know what your personal brand is and you are controlling that perception that other people have of you, then the sky becomes the limit in terms of your marketing, differentiating yourself. So your people truly understand that you are the one for them. You are the one that God is calling to help them and serve them. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Sarah Sambles onto the Robin Graham show. Sarah, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm very honored to be here. I'm really excited to talk about personal branding. Thanks for having me. Of course, absolutely. So listeners, a little backstory. Sarah reached out to me, and this is the power of PR. I had interviewed on Lindsay Maloney's podcast. This was I think early 2022, mid 2022. And Sarah heard me on that podcast, checked me out on Instagram and ended up asking me to speak for her summit. Now, had I not been actively doing PR, then she never would have found me potentially. I mean, maybe, but you know, so I wanted to, I wanted to introduce that concept that there's so much more to building a successful brand and business than posting on social media or sending an email, getting yourself out there and allowing yourself to have additional opportunities is also key for opening the door for additional opportunities. Okay. So with all of that said, I will be speaking at Sarah's summit next week. I think it is. So we're going to dive a little bit into that at the end of the episode. So be sure and stay tuned. And then I will also be putting the link to register for that event, which is brand strategy basically for coaches. So if you are a coach and really, I think the interviews from what I've learned from the women that I've met who are also speakers, you're going to have an opportunity to learn from this summit no matter what walk you're on, what journey you're on. If you are building a business, this branding is key. So coach, not coach, whatever, you will be blessed by the information being presented throughout this summit. So we'll talk a little bit more about those details at the end of the episode. So be sure you listen to the end today. Sarah, will you please tell the listeners a little bit about you and what brought you to the journey that you're on today? Okay. So I, I call myself a brand story coach uh, and I'm a writer as well. Um, I, I choose that phrase because I think it's really important for us to think about marketing in terms of a journey and a story and a narrative, not pushing products. Um, so my background is in marketing. I've been in marketing for nearly 25 years. Uh, so I worked in an agency in England, moved to Ottawa, uh, Canada, oh, 11 years ago. And um, I started writing a book about that around about that time, uh, a children's book. And so I got into this kind of writer's world and started reading, re meeting, sorry, uh, fiction writers and discovered that they were petrified about the idea of marketing themselves. They loved writing the story, sitting in their room, you know, coming up with ideas and characters. But the idea of putting themselves out there was so scary and intimidating for them. And I realized that I had a combination of experience in marketing and a love of writing and just a love of sharing ideas. So I started working with writers uh, to help them figure out how to create a personal brand and how to get it out there. And that led to working with coaches as well. And I moved into coaching more and more. Um, so I love working with coaches and writers now to basically help them figure out the right words to describe what they do so their audience cares. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit about where I'm at today. I love it. And you know, you mentioned writers and I think the artist community in general is very intimidated 
we create mm-hmm. something with such passion and it really is a lot of vulnerability when it comes to trying to market ourselves because art writing it's also subjective and it's scary to put yourself out there. I remember when I published my book, it was like, oh my gosh, what are people going to think? What are they going to say? Have I been too vulnerable? Should I be telling more? You know, it's you, you have, and even as a photographer too, you know, when I built my personal brand, that was such a bold thing to do 12 years ago. People weren't really doing that. Photographers were photographers because they wanted to create and they hid behind the camera. So to really bring out that, um, personality behind what you're doing and what you're creating is key to getting people to see that emotional connection with you and trust that whatever they buy from you, the book, the art, whatever it is, that it it's worthwhile to them. And the more they appreciate you and get to know you, the more they're going to love what you're doing. And then they're going to buy on repeat, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think you're so, you've hit the nail on the head about the the fear and intimidation of putting ourselves out there because it feels so vulnerable. And I guess that's why I like working with sort of ideas, people like coaches, writers, some of them are educators, some of them are are just small local businesses as well. But yeah, that vulnerability is a very uh, common denominator amongst all of us. Uh, And if we're a coach, for example, you know, it's like being a writer in the sense that we're we're putting ourselves out there because we're saying, I'm the one one who's going to help you make the transformation. So we feel so much pressure about that. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I think it can be really intimidating and we can get down the road of comparing ourselves to what everyone else is doing and um, worrying that they're doing it quicker and better than us. And they seem to have made it successful and it's taking us ages. And, you know, we get into all of that when we mm-hmm. when we try and build our personal brand. So I think it, it can be a scary place to begin with. Yeah. And you, you said something, you know, we're putting ourselves out there in a, in a unique way to differentiate ourselves, but we often don't see what other people see. And so to have someone help you along that journey, to have a coach alongside you, because we don't know what we don't know. And just having that eagle eyes view from someone else's perspective can really transform how we communicate what we do and how we do it and who we serve. So With that being said, you have a very specific model that you work around called time. And I would love for you to break that down for us. Sure. Yeah. So (laughs) I guess this came about because, you know, it's, it happens to me too. I've been in this industry for, you know, nearly 25 years and, um, but I haven't always had a personal brand, you know, I've worked for agencies and things. So, you know, when it came to building my personal brand, there were moments where I'd get frustrated and think this just why is this taking so long? Why has no one noticed me yet? Everyone else on Instagram seems to have it all together. They post these beautiful things and they're talking about six figures all the time and, you know, multiple thousands of people on their list. Why, why is it taking so long? And I guess it just came to me, well, branding takes time, T I M E. E, like any good thing, building your brand is not going to happen overnight. And I do not believe there's e- ever a thing as an overnight success. I just don't think it happens. There's always this backstory to what appear to be overnight successes. So I just kind of took that and started, you know, that it just came to me in the moment that those those four words stand for four different keys that I think we need to hold on to as we're building our personal brand. So do you want me to to go into those those letters? Yes, yes please. Let's bring Okay, it so yeah, so the T stands for theme. And this this came because I find one of the biggest challenges that my clients have is kind of going all over the place in their messaging. They find it really difficult to stick to one topic because they're scared that if they stick to one topic, they're going to lose people. Mm-hmm. If they stick to one topic, people are going to get bored. I mean, you talked about it at the beginning. You know, yeah, we've talked about brand story before, but it takes seven to twenty-one times for us to hear something to for actually to actually see transformation. Um, so uh, people get scared of sticking to one topic, um, but theme I think is crucial to building a strong personal brand because then you get recognized for a theme you get recognized for talking about and being good at and being an expert in one particular topic so 
I say theme as opposed to like message or something, because to me, it feels like it has a bit of space Mm -hmm. um, to it. So I kind of, with clients, I use this picture of an umbrella. So you have this umbrella theme, but on the umbrella, there are spokes. So the theme is the big picture message of, you know, so for me, it's, it's brand and, and more specifically, it's brand story, but even brand story, it can be a wide topic. So on that, there will be different spokes. So, you know, I talk about what it's like just to run your own business. I talk about what coaching, I talk about messaging, I talk about writing emails, I talk about social media. So, you know, within that big umbrella theme, you can have lots of spokes. And I think when I put that to people, they go, oh, okay, mm-hmm. right. Having a theme isn't restrictive. Um, so that's what the T stands for. Um, and uh, something I do to to help people think about that umbrella model is I, I, I love pencil and paper and I love mind maps. I'm a bit old fashioned. Um, and so I'll get them to like, and I do this myself all the time for almost every piece of content I write, actually. Um, you know, so I'll get them to put the main theme in the middle. So if it's me, I'll put brand story in the middle. And then just to ru- just to draw spokes coming off it and then just throw ideas on the page. So that's, you know, and the, the rule is anything goes, there's no bad ideas. That's why it's pencil. You can change it. You can scrub it out. It, no one's going to see it. Um, but yeah, I think that's that consistency of message doesn't have to be boring and doesn't have to be restrictive. I think that's the key thing. So that's mm-hmm. why I say start with theme. Well, and I agree completely. And I think it's important to note that just because you focus on brand story, like you do, it it doesn't negate you from talking about how brand story influences all of these other aspects of business, because there is crossover. And it's important that you talk about each one of those areas of crossover, because otherwise people are going to be thinking, well, you only do this thing, but I need all these things. And then you would lose opportunity. So it's important to bring all of the things that you do into play throughout your copy, throughout your messaging. Okay. So let's move on to I. Okay. So I stands for intention. Um, So this is about focus and choosing what you do. So marketing is, you know, my bread and butter. That's, that's sort of what I grew up in, what I trained in and, um, spaghetti at the wall, scattergun doesn't work. Um, now there isn't either on the other hand, a perfect formula that's going to work for every single person. There is trial and error and we've got to find our way, but I use the eye to say intention as in, you know, I think, again, especially as um, maybe especially as women um, and especially as solopreneurs, we can uh, look around at what everyone else is doing on social media and we follow the latest shiny object. You know, so-and-so is doing reels, so I'm going to do reels. Um, Now, TikTok is something, so I'm going to go on to TikTok. Now, there's nothing wrong with those things at all, but it's about, first of all, asking yourself why. Why am I going to go on TikTok? Why am I going to create a reel and not a carousel post? Why am I going to blog and not do a podcast? Why am I going to do a podcast? Why am I going to have an email list? You know, like, I know it sounds like a simple thing, but quite often we don't ask ourselves the question why. Mm -hmm. We just see someone else doing something and we think, oh, that must be the key to marketing. That must be the key to personal branding. There must be something I'm missing. I better do what they're doing. So I put the I in there um, to remind us to carefully select our branding activities, um, obviously our branding message, we talked about that already, um, but also the people, um, like intentionally. And and that's like you said at the beginning, you were, you were on a list of people that I was like, I really like what she shares. I like her philosophy. I like her approach to business. I like her honesty about her faith, how she just naturally brings that in. She's someone who, Robin is someone who I would like to get to know and I'd like to collaborate with. So like intentionally making a list of people of, yeah, they feel like my values align with them and I would like to somehow be in their world. So yeah, being intentional with with all the pieces. So like you said, you know, being an entrepreneur is so many, it, it, like everything influences it. You know, the day we had with our kids and how well we slept and all that kind of thing. So being intentional with our time, our resources, and a big one is our platform. You don't have to be everywhere. 
you can. Amen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you talk about, I like actually how you talk about don't start your business on social media. There might come a time when you go on social media, but don't start it there. So be intentional. Once you've built your website, you've built your email uh, or you've started your email list and, you know, you're starting to put content together and maybe you've got some one-on-one clients or whatever business model you have, then you might be thinking about social media. Let's say you're ready for that and you're feeling strong enough for that. Just pick one. Be intentional. Try and find out where your audience mostly turn up and just pick that one. You don't have to be everywhere. So yeah, the I stands for intention. Always ask the question, why? I love it. M, what does M stand for? All right. M is momentum. So now when I say momentum, I don't mean frequency. I mean consistency. So nothing is going to be built if you start and stop, start and stop, start and stop. And I, I see this happen to, you know, friends who are entrepreneurs, like, because we're human beings and we get burnt out. And I think if we don't have that intention piece first, the why, the why we're doing what we're doing, then we will just follow trends and we will try and do everything and we'll burn out. So when I say momentum, I mean, we've got to keep showing up, but showing up doesn't mean getting burnt out. So, Choose a consistent pace that's going to work for you. Pick that one platform, start there. So like, I'll take my example. Um, I wasn't massive on social media the last kind of 10 years of my life. I was showing up here and there and I was like, you know, poking around, uh, trying various different platforms. And about 18 months ago, I decided, you know what? I'm just going to show up consistently on Instagram because I like it. I see some people on there I really value and respect. I want to see how this works. And so 18 months ago, I got myself a a social media manager and I, you know, she helped me with a strategy and we made a plan and, you know, I showed up, but I was realistic. I was like, I can't post every day. That is not realistic for me, but I think I can post two to three times a week. So I did that. And my, my platform and my engagement grew. And you know, the biggest thing is I made really nice friends. (laughs) I've met some really nice people. It's that relationship building that you can establish. But that's why I say, I don't say don't ever be there because you have opportunity. Mm -hmm. But when you're starting out, those things you mentioned before that can really affect our mindset, comparison, doubt, take following every shiny object that someone says is working for them. And that's where, you know, making that intention, choosing intentional action versus trying to do it all makes a significant difference in the momentum that you're able to achieve. And we know that once you achieve momentum, you're going to see progress. Progress then keeps that momentum going, right? But when you're trying to do everything and you're not intentional, you cannot make progress. And that's why I think, you know, social media can be such a heavy distraction because of Mm -hmm. all of the things that you see and hear there versus keeping your head down, building the foundation first, and then grow your community through those relationships you can build on Instagram. Okay. So now we're at E. We're at E. Well, this is the thing I am most passionate about. Call me a therapist's daughter. I've read too many psychology books. I am an empath myself, but E stands for empathy because I think one of the biggest things we get wrong is we think marketing is about telling people about my product. Mm -hmm. People don't buy products. Nope. They don't buy products. They buy experiences. They buy feelings. They buy benefits. They buy transformations. They buy into a person. They buy into being in someone's community. Uh, So the biggest change you can make in terms of your personal branding is to dig into empathy dig into what do other people in my world who are the kind of right fit for me, what do they need? What are they going through? What's keeping them up at night? What are they struggling with? Just just go and ask them. You will be amazed. Something I often say to clients is don't say no for other people. You don't know until you ask someone whether, you know, what, what they're thinking, A, and B, chances are they will respond. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, you know, going back to this summit, I just reached out to you and said, hey, love what you do. Would you come speak? You could have said no, but I didn't say no for you. I didn't say something like, I know you're busy. I know you've got a lot on. I know you've got your podcast and this and that and that and that. Uh, But just if maybe, you know, could you possibly just just go clearly with an ask and it's their job to say yes or no. 
Um, and if you've done your work and, you know, you've done that intentionality, you know, your values are aligned. So yeah, I think if, if nothing else, when it comes to your personal branding, just keep going back to empathy, keep going back to, well, what does my customer want? And anything you're going to put out there, any messaging you're going to write, just keep asking yourself, what's the point? So what? Just, Mm -hmm. just, you know, put yourself in your customer's shoes and think they're busy. They're scrolling through Instagram. So what? Why should they care? Why should they stop? Um, So yeah, the E is my, I say to people, marketing is not spent, spelt M-A-R-K-E-T-I-N-G. I say it's spelt E-M-P-A-T-H-Y. Marketing is spelt empathy. So I, I agree 100%. We have to understand and be able to take on their pain points so yeah. that they understand that we understand what they're going through. Yeah. All yeah. right. So Sarah, let's talk a little bit about the summit really quickly. Um, Mm -hmm. I would love to have a conversation about what all this entails because I get asked to speak. I just told someone no yesterday because I can't do them all. I get asked to speak at so many of them and I want to make sure number one, that they are aligned with me and my values, that the audience is similar, um, or it doesn't make sense. Right. So when you were approaching doing this summit, there are so many logistics that you have to consider. And I want, I would love to have an entire conversation about that because I see like creating all the content and lucky for you, you're a writer. So that was probably the easy part for you, but the content that has to be created, the affiliate links, the, I mean, uh, getting the people to come in, then getting them to do the interviews and scheduling it all. It seems like such a huge beast. And I understand the goal is to broaden your email list, to bring more people into your community, while also potentially making revenue from the event. So it's easy for us to visualize an event where there's a stage and someone's speaking live and, you know, all of those details. It's different, I think, online because you have so many things that could backfire, go wrong, whatever. Um, just as you could, you know, um, with a live event, but anyway, I don't want to go into all of that. I just want to say that kudos to you for taking on this incredible event, because it's such an amazing resource for people to be able to learn. And it's so time intensive and you don't know what you're going to get out of it. So that to me, that's really generous of you to set forth, to do something like this. The other thing um, I want to say is thank you for your kind words about me and thank you for inviting me because your audience is very similar to my audience and it is a really good fit and we are so aligned from a values perspective. So I truly appreciate that. Okay. With all of that said, will you share with the listeners a little bit more about the summit, the details so that they can understand if it's right for them, not right for them, if they want to go register and if they can watch replays and all that good stuff. I will. Thank you. So the Successful Coach Brand Summit is what we're talking about. It runs March 7th, 8th, 9th. So that's next week, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. What we've got, we wanted to create an event where we are equipping you, female coaches mainly, but like you said, this is actually going to be relevant for any solopreneur, to be honest, uh, any small business owner. So we want to equip coaches with all of the tools and the encouragement and the confidence and the mindset they need to build a successful, authentic brand. Those are really the key things that we want to give to you at the summit next week. So what we did was we sought out, uh, there's 33 speakers in total. We sought out people who were heart-centered leaders, coaches, experts in branding and also in mindset. So um, we've got them together and they are going to deliver 33. Actually, there's 35 because me and my co-host, Amory, are doing two talks each. So there's going to be 35 talks in total. And Though it's going to cover everything from, you know, the words you need to use, the visuals, the marketing, the tools, the tech, the mindset. And the way it it technically works on a logistical level is um, you're going to share the link. Uh, You go to that link. You can get a free 
free ticket. We wanted to make this free because we know how valuable this information is when you're building a personal brand. So you can go grab a free ticket. Now, if you have a free ticket, you'll get an email the morning of each day. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 7th, 8th, 9th of March, you'll get a morning, uh, an email, excuse me, in the morning. And in that email, you will have the links to all of the videos for that day. And you'll have 24 hours to watch them. There's also a Facebook group you can join up to where there's lots of discussion already going on. People are already introducing themselves, making friends. The speakers are in that Facebook group. You can connect with them, ask questions. And there will be daily lives each day um, where we're going to get some experts on those lives. And we're going to have some Q&A with those experts. So that's the free ticket. But we know that branding takes time (laughs) and we know that it it takes work, it takes action. Um, And we know that from 33 speakers, you're going to have a ton that you want to retain. So we created a VIP pass as well. So with the VIP pass, you would get ongoing access to the replay so you can rewatch anything whenever you want. There's a workbook that Anne-Marie's created for you so you can take notes. It's got all of the topics written out and you've got space to take notes of your aha moments and your actions. And then um, there's uh, a platinum VIP pass. So there's two levels of the VIP pass. The gold will, will get you the replays in the book, the workbook. And then the platinum pass, people like you, all the speakers have been incredibly generous and given amazing resources Uh, that add up to about four or $5,000. So it's things like workbooks, mini courses, templates, one-on-one sessions, um, money off training, free books. Like it's incredible and all the details are on the website. So if you get the platinum pass, then you've got all of the replays, watch it whenever you want, take all your notes. And then you've got all of these bonuses you can connect with as well to make sure you can actually go off and do the things that you've learned from the summit. So did I cover everything? I think you did. I think you did. Okay. And I will put the link in the show notes so that everyone can access that link easily, readily, and register for whichever level they they choose. And maybe we'll see them there. Who knows? But I hope so. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for being here. I loved chatting about personal branding. It's something that I am very passionate about. So will you tell the listeners a little bit about where they can find you, connect with you, learn more from you? Thank you. Thank you so, so much for having me. I really love talking about these things too. Yes, uh, please come say hi, sarahsambles.com. So it's S-A-M-B-L-E-S and Sarah with an H. So sarahsambles.com is my website. I'm on Instagram as Sarah Sambles Writer. I am on Facebook and LinkedIn a bit, but Instagram is probably my favorite place to show up. Um, So yeah, either come to my website or come and say hi on Instagram. I would love to connect with you and ask me your questions about branding. Awesome. Sarah, thank you so much. Listeners, I appreciate you being here and thank you for listening till the end. I know that was a big ask, especially since we were promoting something, but I really do believe that there is immense value in this summit and do encourage you to check it out. Um, Like Sarah said, there's opportunity for replays. So even if you can't make it on one of those days, you always have access to the replays and you can listen while you're walking the dog, driving in the car, picking up the kids, whatever it may be. Um, If you found this information about personal branding helpful, please share it. I'm sure there is someone in your circles that could use this information who is struggling to grow their brand. And I think Sarah's method of time is very, very useful and applicable. If you'd be so kind to leave a rating and review, we'd also appreciate that greatly. That helps us bring on great guests like Sarah, as well as get our content out to more people so that we can have that domino effect of good in the world. All right. With that, I will say goodbye and I'll see you all next week.